Game Boy World, and this is Flipple. With this release coming hot on the heels of Konami's Quarth, I think it's safe to declare Game Boy a quarantine zone for puzzle games. This is something like the sixth or seventh puzzle game for the system, depending on how you choose to classify some of the hybrid titles. And that's out of 35 games. That's a lot. Flipple brings us to a sort of critical mass with Game Boy, and these puzzlers aren't about to slow down anytime soon. Like many of Game Boy's puzzle titles, say Tetris, Heiankyo Alien, Quarth, Flipple is based on an existing creation. In this case, a Taito arcade game that sometimes goes by the name Plotting. Flipple is the better name, though. Even though it doesn't perfectly describe the workings of the game mechanics, it seems fittingly onomatopoeic. Flipple's play consists of a little guy who moves up and down on the right side of the screen while holding a block bearing a symbol that matches the symbols on certain blocks in the enormous pile on the left side of the screen. Your goal isn't to match blocks precisely, but rather to whittle the pile down to a target quantity. That being said, block matching does come into play, but it works differently than in your typical match 3 puzzler. You need to toss the block you hold into a piece with the same symbol, but it doesn't matter whether you hit one identical block or five. No, all that really matters is that you can hit a matching block at all. As long as there's a block accessible on the outside edges of the pile bearing the same symbol as the piece you hold, all is well. When you kick a piece into its counterpart, you destroy all matching blocks arranged consecutively along the same line. The piece you tossed replaces the pieces you've smashed, and the next unmatching piece in line pops out and lands near little guy's hands. So basically you match a block to the one in your hands, and it's replaced by a different kind of block. It's a bit more abstract than your usual puzzle mechanics, and this makes Flipple a little difficult to explain. It also makes it pretty challenging to play. To succeed at Flipple, you really need to think a few steps ahead in addition to understanding the somewhat tricky mechanics. It's not enough simply to kick some blocks away, you also need to be certain that the block you end up with after you kick will be valid for play, and that it too has a match available. So while it may look incredibly basic, Flipple gets tricky fast. Obstructions appear to add further complexity to the rules, preventing you from easily making matches. And there are just enough block types to mean that the further you advance, the lower your chances of finding a match. You effectively lose a life if you end up with a block you can't play. When you die, your active block becomes a special block. Special blocks can create a match with any symbol, but you only get three special blocks and once those are used up, your game is over and something like 50 levels to contend with, so it becomes more than a little nerve-wracking the further you make it into the game. There's also a little bit of additional complexity in the fact that your little block chucker can make matches not just on the right edge of the pile, but also along its top edge. When a block hits a vertical wall, it reflects at a 90 degree angle downward and moves directly into the blocks. Most stages present you with a jagged stair-stepped roof in order to allow you, or in some cases force you, to make use of both edges of the pile. And then the designers will toss in an obstruction, sometimes a one-way obstruction, to force you to strategize around those as well. In short, it's a devious but addictive puzzler. Its leisurely pace and lo-fi visuals means that it works just as well on Game Boy as on any of the many other platforms that saw a port of it, including some long-in-the-life British computers like the ZX Spectrum and Amstrad CPC. It even ended up on Amstrad's obscure and painfully short-lived console, the GPX 4000, making it one of about two dozen games ever released for that system. But really, the Game Boy version might as well be considered the definitive one. It lacks color, yes, but this is the kind of game that's perfect for long car trips. Flivel, or plotting, also marks Taito's first Game Boy effort. The first of nearly 50 games the venerable arcade giant would produce for the platform, so it's kind of the start of something big. Finally, this is the only home version of the game that would see release in the US. Plotting was apparently big in Europe, and Japan also saw a Famicom version, but this was it for America, outside of some scarce arcade distribution. Amidst the flood of puzzle games that would inundate the Game Boy's library through the years, Flipple tends to go overlooked. It's a shame, because it's one of the more intricate and engrossing games we've seen so far in Game Boy World. Then again, we still have a whole lot of puzzlers left to go. For a whole heck of a lot of puzzle games, keep reading GameBoyWorld.com. And please consider supporting this project on Patreon or by picking up the book. Thanks.